Uh, I'm very fortunate to interview Deborah Holland regarding the new Animal Logic uh, EP. And this is quite a pleasure because I, I remember when the first Animal Logic CD came out a while ago and then the last one animal logic 2 came out in 19 i think it's 96 love no, both 91 91 wow wow yeah so the obvious we were question, what seven and eight years old when they came out right uh <laughs> I, I i i wish but i guess you the obvious question i'm sure you're getting is why now what caused you and stanley clark and Stuart copeland to uh, move ahead with five new songs for an EP? Well, first of all, it's not five songs. It started off as five songs, but we're only releasing two songs. Sure. Right, right, right. The other three got released just as me, uh, but Stuart's playing drums on two of those tracks. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> to backtrack. So we didn't see each other for many years, and then... Um, we got together and had lunch. Don't ask me what year it was, but it was many years after 1991. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. we said, you know, we should we should make some music. So we got together and we did one track, uh, which was called Whipping Boy. Okay. And we were we recorded that with audio and video at Stewart's studio called Sacred Grove. And we released that. It was just for fun. Um, and then I suggested, why don't we get together and record more? So 2019, so I believe it was the year before the pandemic, we got together and laid down five tracks and we didn't finish them. We just, they were just basic tracks. Mm -hmm. The plan was to finish them, but then COVID hit. So obviously that put a damper on pretty much everything. Sure. And so I decided to finish them myself uh, up here at a studio um, near Vancouver, not right in Vancouver. And two of the songs were, God, they pretty much were there. The drums sounded great. The bass sounded great. And so I just finished those as Animal Logic. Mm -hmm. And the guys liked them and they approved the mixes and they approve the masters. And so that's where we're at. We're just releasing those two songs. Well, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I, I do yeah. want to talk about the two songs. Um, Ordinary, which features a fantastic Howard Levy. No, um, he's on He's on the other one. Sorry. Can, he's on Can, can You, you tell, tell Me? me? He's on yeah. Can You Tell Me? Okay. Yes. yes. All right. And that that is, both of them are wonderful. And both of them have I guess an animal logic feel, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. But um, fine, thank you. Which was, I think, your solo two thousand yeah one two release could also the songs could have easily fit into animal logic with different well, maybe. Sure, I mean, I guess you could say any song that I've written could fit into animal logic, right? Because I was the songwriter, right? <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The and the, the production is fantastic on both the the two songs you've released so far. Um, how did you decide what elements you're going to add into the production of those songs? Besides, of course. Yeah. Well, that's you usually you listen to a track, and I I worked with a producer that I I did my record fine thank you with. His name is Winston. House child, mm -hmm. and he and I would just listen to the tracks and say, you know, this would sound good with this instrument or this instrument. Actually, when I was in LA, um, Stanley and I got together to work on uh, "Can You Tell Me," the, okay. the kind of bossa nova e sounding track, and I said this would sound really great with chromatic harmonica. And Stanley said, "Well, let's call Stevie Wonder." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. Um, so he and I, we, we thought chromatic harmonica would always be uh -huh. a good touch, but obviously I didn't get Stevie Wonder, but Howard's amazing. So, uh, and Howard, you know, because of technology, he just did the track in, in, in his studio in Chicago. Chicago, right. Yeah. 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 The other one, um, 
I played acoustic guitar on it. And so it was acoustic guitar, bass and drums. And, you know, you could hear what was missing. And I've got a friend that uh, actually he was my high school boyfriend, uh, who's a multi-instrumentalist. His name is Patterson Barrett. He's based out of Austin, Texas. Okay. He's played on pretty much anything that I've done that's solo. And so he put down um, uh, that the pedal, pedal steel, steel yeah. on Can yeah. You Tell Me, which yeah. I thought was perfect and just kind of gave it that little bit of a quirkier element. And then uh, he played uh, lap steel slide on Ordinary. And he goes, man, I'll put some mandolin on too. And I said, mandolin, I don't hear that. But of course the part was great. And so we kept it. And then he, he also did some kind of organ type overdubs as well. Well, I'm so glad you told me that because I yeah. thought when I first heard, uh, can you tell me what well, I thought I heard was, I knew that sounded like Har Howard Levy, but I thought, is that, is that pedal steel? Is that really? Yeah. And, it, yes. and it works really well. <laughs> it works really well. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I guess you talked a little bit about the production in terms of pre pandemic and working with Stanley, his studio. Uh, yeah, the process I would assume though has changed since you did Animal Logic too in terms of how you do production with the availability of Pro Tools. Oh, sure, things. there was no such thing as like sending tracks off to Chicago, right? right. Uh, back then, you know, there's pros and cons to it. Personally, mm -hmm. I'm not. I prefer people get into a studio and make a record. That's what I like. I'm not that nuts about the Pro Tools method of, you know, you send it off and they send you back 15 tracks mm -hmm. of the same solo and then you spend 10 hours editing it together. It's not my favorite way <laughs> of recording. Uh, you know, obviously I, I'm old school because I come from old school recording, but it does make a lot of things possible. It does open up you know, a world of players and, and, you know, a way of, of, of doing things remotely that you couldn't get that group of people into the same space at the same time. Sure. That makes sense. In terms yeah. of your writing, is it more keyboard based or is it guitar based? How do you start your process? Yeah, I write on both instruments and um, it depends what the, what kind of mood I'm in. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I just wrote a song yesterday on piano. I felt, I just sat down at the piano. I felt like playing. I would say probably more of my songs are written on guitar, maybe two thirds guitar, one third piano, mm -hmm. something like that. But it's, and sometimes I'll start on one instrument and I'll go, no, this would sound better on piano or vice versa. You know, I'll start. And I write very differently on both instruments. Okay. This guitar is more rhythm based um, and piano is more kind of moodier. Melodic. Yes. Yeah. So I do write different songs on the two instruments. And we've talked a little bit about the differences between your solo writing and animal logic and they could be interchangeable. Yeah. Um, and I've been listening to Vancouver a lot lately. Uh, in preparation for this. Oh, cool. But I had not listened to The Refugees. Is the the is the writing process okay. with, is the writing process that's different. Really, yeah, so? the refugees is definitely different. Um uh in the beginning we would take uh songs that each of us had written separately and we would do what I'm putting in quotes, refugize them. <laughs> So kind of make them more uh, Americana, folky, mm -hmm. um, a, a sound. And everything, mostly everything that we do always has three-part harmony. Mm -hmm. So nothing I ever did in Animal Logic. I didn't have two other singers, so I didn't have that. And the three of us, when we write together, I would say we come up with songs that none of us would have written on our own which is fascinating. Um, and I love the songs that we write together, but definitely none of them would I have written on my own. And I think the other two members, Sidney Bullins and Wendy Waldman would probably say the same thing. Mm -hmm. It really ends up being uh, the three of us coming together 
uh, to agree, sometimes disagree for a long time <laughs> till we get to what we want. But um, yeah, so that's definitely a different process. Yeah, that's a separate challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, the song you wrote, um, I think it was a few years ago, You Need a Song. Yeah. Which included, I think it was Stanley, but didn't include Stuart. The opposite. It's got oh, Stuart, but, Stuart not, but not Stanley. Stanley. Yeah. So what that was the song that we were going to record, that we did start recording mm -hmm. when we did, you know, when we did this project pre COVID. Um, but I think the, my memory is, is that the drums were pretty much there, uh, but the bass part wasn't yet. I, you know what? Now I'm, I'd have to really dig through old tracks Stanley would have had to redo his bass mm -hmm. but the drums were already there so I just did that's how I did that yeah so what do you provide um Stanley and Stuart before they lay down your tracks do you give them a basic vocal track do you give them a basic rhythm track which is recorded on the keyboard yeah, whatever or... whatever instrument I wrote it on and a vocal and a lead vocal Mm -hmm. that's usually what they would have worked to um and Stuart's done that a lot with some of my songs but the two that we're releasing we recorded together, together right in in the room at the same time yeah the basic right. tracks anyway not the overdubs mm -hmm. yeah. and then with the basic tracks um you're playing rhythm guitar or piano whichever yeah, and then it gets it's taken out real quickly. <laughs> but it's a guy. It, it gets in the way. Okay. Yeah, like the song Can You Tell Me, the kind of bossa nova E1, mm -hmm. the way that I wrote that on guitar, I'm kind of playing a bass part to it. So we immediately got rid of it so Stanley could take over, uh, you know, that. And he, the way that he plays, obviously he takes up, lots of harmonic space as well so yeah my my parts typically would get in the way and that's even the way that animal logic one and two are recorded wow that's amazing yeah uh, and, and stewart's parts or are are my stewart's parts or are more direct than you would think you would get from stewart copeland does that make sense uh yeah because i think he They're... plays differently in the studio than he does live yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i mean if we were playing these songs live i'm sure they would sound very different mm -hmm. fuller yeah. right they right. would end up going into places that uh, a studio track doesn't go and that was the case with animal logic as well when we would play live the songs kind of took on a completely different life um and suited more and you know became more improvisational sure so has your style in terms of your vocal approach changed since uh you started your solo career and your career as an educator yeah i i mean i think vocally songwriting no i don't think yeah. that's that changed with the first songs that made it onto the animal logic album that was a real departure for me I had been in LA for 10 years trying to get a record deal or a publishing deal. And I think I got rejected so many times. I started writing songs that were a cross between what I wanted to do and what I thought record companies wanted. And so they became, I think, soulless. And then I got to a point where I said, screw this, I'm going back to writing songs for me. And the first two songs I wrote were Spying the House of Love and firing up the sunset gun which were the two first songs mm -hmm. that animal logic recorded so no i've never gone back in terms of a writer as a vocalist yes i feel like i have changed i'm not as much of a um big belter as i was in the animal logic days now i don't know if that's because you had to sing loudly to get over the, <laughs> the volume <laughs> i'm just i don't I, I don't know. I'm I'm not, I'm a little less of a builder than I was. I use it more sparingly mm -hmm. uh, than I did back then. Yeah. But I also imagine when you're doing your when you're doing solo shows or, or shows with the trio, that it takes a different voice to convey what you want to convey to the audience as opposed to when you're playing with a 
very strong, powerful electric bass. Yes. And then yes, and uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And even back then, I think sometime, I don't remember, it was. Be I think it was between the first and second album, I actually had to have vocal surgery. I got um, blood blisters Ooh. on my vocal cords. Um, now, remember, that's also before the time of these in-ear in -ear monitors. monitors. Yeah. I didn't have that back then. So <laughs> I had Stanley's wall of, 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 of bass speakers and, you know, super loud volume. So, um, yeah, that's that's the biggest. But even in the studio, I was more of a belter. With, okay. with them i i i really i use it a lot more sparingly now oh yeah. wonderful i so, like a more intimate style of singing now than i did well, back i then. mean i your vocal your voice has lost none of the power or the nuance it had um, oh, these, so these songs great. are just just really when i got the release of this i was surprised that animal logic was returning then mm -hmm. i looked at your website and saw that you've been working with them for a while anyway in some right. form of capacity so right that's that's wonderful so you mentioned we talked about the two songs which have been uh, which are, have been released or well they will be november next friday november 18th i don't right. know what date this is coming out but yeah this and this will probably be coming out in written form in about 10 days okay so <laughs> right around the time that yeah November 18th is the release date. Yeah. So the other three songs, which you mentioned, uh, yeah. plans for them in the near future? They just got released as singles. I never pressed them into any kind of form. I've thought about maybe if I, if I ever record another record, <clears throat> I've got about eight, seven or eight new songs that maybe I would add those to a record. That's the only thing that i've thought about yeah so why would you not record another record i mean you have an extensive solo career as it is uh, why because it's super expensive nobody cares about records anymore mm. uh I, yeah the the cost it's i mean i probably will just because i like i like make i like having a record <laughs> of my songs but it may just be a real stripped down version it might just be one instrument and voice. I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'll see if I make any money from this, from these two songs, just yeah. to pay for another one. You know, I did the the uh, crowdsourcing thing once. I, it's the crowdfunding. I'm just, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of money to make a record. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Good. I mean, I love being in a studio. When I'm in a studio, I, that's home. You know, I just love it, but it's it's expensive yeah yeah to make a, a record at the quality of uh, that you're making I, I would imagine it would be expensive in yeah. an actual studio too with real yeah. musicians yeah uh and that's that's a shame because but but again you have such a fantastic solo catalog um and you've been keeping yourself extremely busy over the years too yeah. so i mean even i was hoping someone would put out these two songs on vinyl uh, my idea was to release a, you know a two-sided vinyl singles and I couldn't find anybody to do that even and that's with Stanley Clark and Stuart Copeland so you know it's very difficult these days to do any kind of physical product sure I understand that I think I heard an interview you gave to Inside Music Cast a few months. I think it was Inside Music Cast a few months ago. And you talked about your move to, to Canada, uh, the impetus for that, and how your life has changed since moving from the United States. Um, and I'd imagine that that would make record making a little bit more difficult. But there's such a vibrant community in Vancouver, yeah. too, for musicians. Yeah, oh, there's tons of great musicians here. Right, Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, it's that I don't think it would be lack of musicians that would ever be uh, a hindrance. Yeah. Right. So what is your next step for Animal Logic or for your solo career? Well, for Animal Logic, I'm just curious to see if the two songs lead to anything. Um, I mean, I, of course, would love to do more with them, but they are both incredibly busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, Stuart's got 
things like over the next five years. And I don't know that they want to go out and tour. I mean, of course I, I would, you know, I'm in a different position than either one of them. I don't have that level of career. I, I mean, nothing would give me more pleasure than to, than to tour with them. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess if somebody, if a, uh, if an event person came aboard and said, Hey, I'll give you guys X amount of dollars. If you come on the, I, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. I would love to do some more recording in the future. That's not out of the question, but it would be hard to organize. And I even have a, a, a plan of what I'd like to do next time, which is I, I don't want to bring in finished songs. I want to bring in the lyrics oh, wow. and we write the songs together. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that because I think it's boring for both of them at this point in their career to just learn someone else's song. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think that is such a thrill for them, but I think that idea of creating the songs together in the moment, creating them and writing them and recording them would, could be fun, but whether that happens, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, solo, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm in a writing page, uh, phase right now. We'll see what happens with that. And my trio, The Refugees, we're just finishing up oh. uh, a new album and we are going to be uh, touring. So we're, we have uh, three shows in January in the LA area. And then we're playing in Lawrence, Kansas on February 6th. We're playing an arts theater there and we're starting to book festivals for next summer. So that's what's going on. So the Refugees album is done. Can you tell us what it's called? I'm supposed to keep it a secret. Oh. I, I, I'm not sure why, because it's cover <laughs> tunes. It's it's amazing, though. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't I, know why they want it to be a secret, because it's you'll see why when it comes out. I, yeah. I understand. I'll I'll definitely look for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I gave Billy a few questions I usually ask everyone I interview. One was about your equipment, which is actually on your website. So I'll, I'll take that down. Okay. And the other question was, I and everyone says this is an unfair question, but I ask it anyway, uh, about your five yeah, favorite I, albums. And I answered, I said, there's no way I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> way. I, would, I, I, could, I couldn't pick five. I couldn't even pick five jazz albums or five you know <laughs> uh i asked no uh guitarist Vinny zuma who used to be um um god what's the joe jackson's guitarist that question and he sent me a list of a hundred albums <laughs> that, that's what i would end up doing although it would even be more than a hundred <laughs> <laughs> okay fair enough well i think I, that's a, i think that's a question you can only ask someone who's 18 <laughs> You know, <laughs> maybe when I was eight, maybe when I was eighteen, I could have told you, but I don't even know if those five albums would be on my list anymore. Well, that's the thing. I mean, my podcast is about my favorite music, and it's gone on for four seasons because I keep coming up with more and more things that I like, yeah. and it changes when you get the older you get. It just changes, and that's music. Absolutely, so, absolutely. I, I mean, can you name your five favorite albums? I can name my five favorite albums now, but I can't name my five. But they may change tomorrow. Exactly. exactly. Um. So. Yeah. I'll, I'll, that's that's fair <laughs> enough, and I do appreciate your answer. Is there anything sure. else that you would like to share with us? Sorry, say that Any, again. Anything else you want to share? Oh, no, nothing that I could think of. Uh, just look out. For for November 18th and for the refugees record and you know like follow all that other crap that everybody always says <laughs> <laughs> well, the songs will be for sale on Bandcamp. yes I yes. should say that and that's the best way of supporting a musician because the musician actually does keep most of the money from Bandcamp, whereas other things that i shall not be named you don't really make any money so you don't yeah. make any money at least yeah. band camp also has band camp fridays when the musician gets 100 percent too yes. so yeah. that yeah. is absolutely uh essential and i will post the link yeah. to the music when Great. i do the Great. articles okay. i really Wonderful. appreciate your time 
My okay. pleasure. It's really yeah. an honor because I I've loved your music for so long. Oh, and thank you so much. I'm just glad you're doing what you're doing, uh, solo oh, and thank you. with the refugees, and of course with Animal Logic. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes, you take okay, care. Okay, have of a wonderful day. Okay, bye bye. Bye.